Ananasi Joe's colleagues, Imina Chantai Sinkuna Lasaturan Guahan is back from recess. Good morning, everybody. At this time, um, I'm going to go ahead and address uh, the Assistant Majority Leader for a motion at this time. Sign uh, Maasi Maskehalu. Maskehalu, I motion notwithstanding the House rules to move back to motions. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Senator, uh, at this time, I'm going to recognize, I'm going to, Assistant Majority Leader, you are recognized. Um, I do have some bills to, or a bill to put on the uh, session agenda. Uh, okay. Majority, majority Leader, just to note for the colleagues, uh, we'll deal with the ones that have the committee report. So. Please uh, proceed, uh, Assistant Majority Leader. So, uh, notwithstanding the House rules, I move to place uh, Bill Number 268-35COR, authored by myself, uh, the Speaker Tina Rose Munya Barnes, Jose Pito Trelahi, Clinton E. Rigel, Joe S. Senegastine, Therese M. Trelahi, and Sabina Flores Perez. An act to add a new subsection 1039 to Chapter 10, Title I, Guam Code Annotated, relative to recognizing and celebrating E. Manatsu, excuse me, celebrating E. Man Manatsu Siha on the second day in September. Uh, I move to place that onto the session agenda. Senator uh, Marsh Taichino. Um Let me go ahead and recognize Senator Lee first on the point of information, and then I'll share my uh, comments with you. Senator Lee. So this is Madam Speaker. Actually, just a point of inquiry, if the mover could repeat the number of the bill. Was it 268? Hung in. 268. So on a point of information, Madam Speaker, bill number 268 um, was received by the Committee on Rules on the 7th, but it's still in core review. It has not been filed and is not, the committee report is not available online for... Yeah. So, so uh, Assistant Majority Leader, based on that and based on our, our rules, we will go ahead and revisit that motion at a later date. So if you can well, just... Well, for that motion, I, I did have a notwithstanding the House rules motion. I understand. And I'm fine with people voting on whether it does or does not. On Senator Senator Lee, could you please? I'm going to ask for a moment's recess.
You mean that Trent Tysinko and Alyssa Tudor go on his back from re recess, Assistant Majority Leader? Uh, so with that, um, I'm not sure what the next step is, is to call for the vote. Uh, if, if it's not entertained by the body, that's fine. On the motion, is there an objection to place the bill on? There is an objection. All those in favor? Say that. I apologize, Madam Speaker. Just a point of inquiry. If the mover of the, the motion could clarify her motion to place this bill at the very bottom of our file, if the body is willing to accept it, to give the Committee on Rules an opportunity to now shift its focus to try to put this committee report on uh, above all the others that were waiting in queue. But if we could just have the mover of the motion ask to place this bill at the very bottom to allow us that time to be able to do that. So just Masi. Assistant Majority Leader, do you want to verify your motion? If not, there's an objection on the floor. So uh, I think that was a point of inquiry. So I would be willing to place it on the bottom of the agenda after the ones that have the committee reports already filed in, in online. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Assistant Majority Leader, on your appointment. Uh, so with my appointment, uh, that one is still waiting to be put online. Um, but I do have a bill that is online, uh, which has been filed in this online. So that is uh, Bill 426. So um, I move to place onto the session agenda uh, Bill 426 COR as substituted by the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Hagatnya Revitalization, Self Determination, and Regional Affairs. An act to amend subsection 3115 of Chapter 3, Title 5, and subsection 77105. And one, and excuse me, and 77107A of Chapter 77, Title 21, all of Guam Code annotated relative to clarifying the appointment process of the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation. As, uh, yeah. On the motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Legislative Secretary, you are recognized. Sidious Masi, Madam Speaker, I move to place on the session agenda Bill 301-35, an act to add a new Article 11 to Chapter 77 of Division 2, Title 12, Guam Code Annotated, relative to authorizing certain tax credits for required medical equipment for the Guam Memorial Hospital Authority as amended by the Committee on Health, Tourism, Historic, Preservation, Land and Justice. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I also move to place on the session agenda Bill 416-35 COR, an act to add a new Article 13 to Chapter 2 of Division 1, Title 10, Guam Code Annotated, relative to the establishment of the Senior Citizens Housing Task Force Act of 2020, as amended by the Committee on Higher Education, Women, Youth, and Senior Citizens. On the motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing, none. <coughs> motion carries. Sitius Masi, Madam Speaker. Uh, Senator uh, Lee. Sidious Masi, Madam Speaker, and Buenos colleagues, um, I'd like to make a motion uh, to place Bill Number 405-35 COR onto the second reading file, and that's Bill 405-35 COR introduced by Regine Bisco Lee, an act relative to establishing a task force to explore the feasibility 
of creating a groundwater conservation area on select Government of Guam properties which overlay a portion of the Northern Guam Lens Aquifer, or NGLA, wherein no production wells shall be installed and no development shall occur. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Senator Sabina Perez, you are recognized. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, notwithstanding House rules, I move to place Bill 413-35 COR um, on the uh, session agenda. Uh, it's introduced by myself and co-sponsored co by Speaker Tina Rose Minnie Barnes and Senator Joe S. St. Augustine. It's an act to add a new section 67101.7 of Chapter 67, Title 21, Guam Code Annotated, relative to adopting the 2017 Guam Tropical Energy Code or GTEC to renumber the existing sections 67101.7 and 67101.8 of Chapter 67, Title 21, Guam Code Annotated, and to amend relevant sections of locally adopted building codes. Senator Regine. Sister Smasi, Madam Speaker, just a point of information for the body. The committee report um, was received and approved by CORE at 10.05 this morning. So if it's not online right now, then it should be in the next 10 to 15 minutes uh, for my colleagues' consideration. Sister Smasi. Thank you. I will go ahead and allow that motion. Are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Senator Therese Terlahi. Senator Luis Munya. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Ma Madam Speaker, notwithstanding the objections of Imagahagan Guahan, I move to act on vetoed Bill Number 207-35 COR uh, to the voting file. Is that two? On the motion to place vetoed Bill Number 207-35 to the voting file. Yes. Can I, can I have a moment just to find it? It is on the motions folder. And I will at this time allow um, Senator Luis Munya to briefly speak on it. Senator Munya. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, contrary to the veto message of Imega Hagen Guahan, that Guam law does not contain any regulatory framework, framework for massage therapy, I point out that Title 26, Chapter 4, Article 12 contains 15 pages of rules and regulations. The problem with these rules and regulations is that they confine massage therapists to work in quote unquote massage parlors and they prohibit massage parlors from being co-located with any other businesses. The assumption for this restriction is that illegal activity that is mentioned but is not implied occurs in massage parlors. Madam Speaker, there have been many characterizations of what this bill does and doesn't do. Now, just to be clear, the bill does not stop the Department of Public Health and Social Services and the Board of Cosmetology from regulating cosmetologists or cosmetology businesses. The bill does not permit or allow any massage therapist or any other person to practice any arts of cosmetology. The bill does not alter any of the licenses that are under the jurisdiction of the Board of Cosmetology. The bill does not, excuse me, the bill does not restrict the Department of Public Health for regulating massage therapy as a trade, profession, or business. It does not alter any of the rules of massage therapy except those that will allow it to co-locate with a cosmetology business. Nothing in this bill requires the Board of Cosmetology to regulate massage therapy. Nothing in this bill will allow massage therapists to do hairstyling, barbering, manicures or pedicures, esthetician services or makeup. Madam Speaker, there's nothing in this bill that will stop Department of Public Health from requiring a separate space or an enclosed room in a cosmetology business for massage therapy. It simply eliminates the requirement for a separate door. 
If the fear is that unlicensed individuals can practice cosmetology, well, the veto of this bill will not prevent that from happening anyway. The penalties are quite severe for those caught practicing cosmetology without a license. They include fines and the closure of the establishment. None of that will change if this bill is enacted. Madam Speaker, under current law, rules and regulations only place, the only place that massage therapists can legally practice massage therapy is in a massage parlor or massage establishment. If the therapist is a licensed chiropractor or physical therapist, the practitioner can practice massage therapy in those clinics. It's extremely expensive for a lone massage therapist to legally practice their trade on Guam because those therapists will need a separate business space with separate restroom facilities. A lone therapist will not be able to share the cost, receptionists, laundry and janitorial services, telephone and utilities with any other business. The Department of Public Health and Social Services and the Board of Cosmetology can at any time required that massage therapy services be performed in a separate private area apart from any from the other services that take place in the shop the typical cosmetology practice is one where every licensed cosmetologist is an independent contractor the shop takes an agreed percentage from each independent contractor and the independent contractor agrees to not compete with the shop in sales of beauty and grooming products. This bill will allow a massage therapist to enter into a similar arrangement with a cosmetology shop. This business model is not unique on Guam. It is the practice throughout Asia, Europe, and the US. This bill passed 14 to zero. I ask my colleagues again to join me in overriding the veto of bill number 207-35. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, uh, Senator Munya. On the motion to place bill 207-35 to the voting file. Is it 207? 207. 207, are there any objections? See. I apologize, Madam Speaker, just a point of order. Is this a non-debatable motion or do we have an opportunity to ask questions? Senator Lee, I will recognize you. So just Masi, Madam Speaker, if the mover of the, the motion could just um, I believe that in the governor's veto message that uh, there was an issue or there was a concern by the governor's office that this bill may require um, additional certification from public health that perhaps doesn't exist. Um, and so I just wanted to give the author an opportunity to address that and, and further clarify for the body. Thank you, Senator Lee. Senator Munya. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm, I'm just going to pull up the uh, real quickly the message from the Megahagan Guahan. So, Madam Speaker, when we had the public hearing on this and we had the Department of Public Health and Social Services um, in that public hearing, they did say that they are working to regulate some of the rules and regulations that are currently in the statute now. Again, there's 15 pages of that. It's not just a go and get a, a simple health certificate test. There are so many things involved in that. And granted, it does need to be updated, and I'm sure there are some illegal practices that are going on that, that can address that issue. But it's not to say that it changes anything currently now. It can in the future, of course, we can regulate it a little bit more with the Department of Public Health and Social Services. And there's nothing in this bill that doesn't say that the cosmetology board can't also govern over massage therapists as well. So it is a work in progress, Madam Speaker, um, uh, to address that issue. We definitely can work on getting it done, but at this point we do have some very qualified massage therapists that are just in need of a place to practice. 
And this, and this, uh, this is an opportunity for them now to get out there and actually practice legally instead of having maybe to go to a massage parlor or go to, say, for example, someone's home. It just gives them a better opportunity business-wise. And no, there is nothing that stops the governing board to oversee massage therapists as well. And we can work together with Department of Public Health and Service, Social Services with that too. Thank you, Senator Munoz. Senator Lee. This is just Mossy, Madam Speaker. I'm, I'm again just reviewing the veto message from Imaga Hagen Guahan where she states, DPHSS does not license massage therapists. And in fact, there is not a licensing body for such profession on Guam. These defects make the bill unworkable in its present form. And I think I'm just gonna have to take a few moments, Madam Speaker, and, or maybe um, get some additional information from DPHSS because I do think that it was the intention of this body when we took up this bill to really try to give our massage therapists and our salon and um, beauty shop owners or these businesses more flexibility, especially during this time. We know that they have been um, restricted in the amount of customers that they can accept in their, in their businesses uh, due to COVID restrictions and want to make sure that everybody's operating safely I mean, protect the health of these workers as well as the, the clientele that they serve. And so, Madam Speaker, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to have to do additional, um, have an additional inquiry on this with DPHSS to try to find out a little bit more information. But um, I appreciate the opportunity of the, the senator who introduced this bill to revisit this and look at it a little bit further. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator Lee. Would you be registering that as an objection or just, okay. On the motion, Senator Castro. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise in support of the measure. Uh, as my colleague has done, she fully articulated some of the finer points of what's permissible or not, of what's acceptable in terms of these certain trades and practices and what is not. I was quite pleased that she also did a fine job addressing those notions of improprieties by such a new arrangement or at least the elements that make up the consolidation of those services through this kind of an arrangement. But she also did a great job. She so poignantly stated that these improprieties will happen anyway, and it doesn't matter what the establishment is. It doesn't matter what the service industry is. The propensity for these types of improprieties happen anyway. But she took that extra step to articulate what happened. She also reminded us that there are penalties that there are certain types of regulations in place that address this in a, in a in, to use her term, in a severe manner, severe penalties. But for me, Madam Speaker, I rise in support of the measure because what's happening here under the current fiscal condition, under the current restraints, is that entities have to evolve. Entities have to find a way to generate additional revenue by providing more value. We see restaurants evolving by uh, incorporating a bar component to their establishment. We see gas stations incorporating service shops that do more than fix the engine. They, they do auto detailing. They do a whole bunch of other things. We see schools modifying their curricula so that now you can compete athletically online. Granted, Madam Speaker, granted, these are apples and oranges, but the principle is the same that everyone is attempting to provide a greater value by providing a variety of services. Frankly, for me, as a member of this community, if I don't subscribe to this, I simply have the right not to participate. I am a firm believer in the natural market and the regulatory bodies that are in place. If there is a proliferation of impropriety, they will come down and regulate this. If people feel that something's not right with this establishment, they will not patronize it. With that said, Madam Speaker, I rise in support of Senator Munoz's motion to place this in the third reading file. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Castro, on the motion. Are there anyone else wishing to speak? If not, um, 
on the motion to place veto bill number 207-35 uh, to the voting file. Are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none. Motion carries. Senator James Moylan, I'll recognize you at this time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, notwithstanding the objections of the governor, I move to act on veto bill 13335 to voting file. Can you read the title, please? Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm sorry. One, one moment, please. Yeah. It's on the agenda today, Senator Moylan. It's right there. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, 13335 CORE is an act to amend subsection 15108 of Chapter 15, Title 18, Guam Code Annotated, relative to reducing the cost for filing the Articles of Organization for a Limited Liability Company. Madam Speaker. On the motion, Senator Jim, would you like to speak about it or just ask for the vote? Just ask for the vote, Madam Speaker. On, on, the, on the motion to place veto, vetoed bill number 133-35-COR to the voting file, are there any objections? I will allow you to speak. Committee and Rules Chair, Senator Lee, you are recognized. Suzu Smasi, Madam Speaker, if the mover of the uh, motion could just detail some of the um, points in the veto message. Thank you. Senator Jim, would you like to detail some of the points? Yes, Madam Speaker, I'll be happy to. And, and in that case, I wish to discuss then the veto the, points as well. You may proceed, Senator Moylan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the veto message coming from the governor as dated December 11, uh, 2020, uh, addressed to uh, Madam Speaker. Um, I'll just simply read it. It's quite short. Uh, Bill 13335 seeks to promote local entrepreneurship by reducing the initial filing fee for the limited liability corporations from $1,000 to $250. While the overall purpose of the bill is commendable, and our administration itself initiated numerous measures to support entrepreneurship on the island, particularly among new businesses. A 75% reduction in LLC fees will severely impact the Department of Revenue and Taxation Collection. Our government relies on revenues collected by DRT to provide critical services in support of public health, public safety, and education. And it is particularly important that these revenues continue giving the cuts made by the legislature to critical agencies in a current budget year. Further, although the bill accurately has consented as consent with the national level, notwithstanding the fact that many states impose high annual entrepreneur high fees as well as taxes and licensings not applicable on Guam, ultimately existing fees do not inhibit entrepreneurship to prevent business from adjusting the corporate structure later in their corporate existence. For this reason, I veto Bill 13335, uh, signed by the Honorable Governor Louis Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero. Um, Madam Speaker, these, um, I understand the, the Governor's uh, veto message, and, and absolutely, any time we uh, reduce some fees uh, from government, it, it does affect our uh, general fund. Uh, I also saw when, when we initially discussed this bill or when this bill was introduced and, uh, and the discussion was made on it, we were anticipating a, a certain amount of budget uh, to, come from, um, to come from the licensing at, at the rate of $1,000. Since that time, we've been dealing with a pandemic and many of our businesses have uh, either closed their doors temporarily or had the opportunity to open up halfway or have decided to leave. And since that time, many folks who may have uh, thought at one time I would like to open my business one day soon as an LSC uh, have reconsidered that and may have thought maybe I shouldn't. But any, at this particular time, a $1,000 fee, uh, yes, that would generate some income uh, for the general fund if they so wanted to at, at that point. But how many people would want to today pay $1,000 to either change from a sole proprietorship to an LSC or how many folks today who were considering uh, opening their business as an LLC 
would even consider it, uh, why do that at such a great risk? Uh, risking, of course, your health and wondering, uh, can I afford to do this? And wondering if I'll have any customers for whatever services that I, I, tend, I, I want to provide, whether it be uh, a lawn service, Joe's lawn service business. Uh, a, a savings of $750 could be, buy me a great lawn boy, it's a terrific lawn mower, or, or another bush cutter, or one extra hand uh, that I can get a few contracts with uh, in order to start up my business as an LLC to rather, rather than uh, put all my assets in, on, on the line as a sole proprietorship. Or if I even wanted to start, what I'm asking, Madam Speaker, is that, that we reconsider the veto because of the time that we are in. Uh, we need to generate uh, general funds, yes, but not in the form of fees. Yes, get your license, but let's not generate uh, our funding for our government critical services and and fire and police and, and, and education by, by attack, attaching fees that are restrictive, especially at this time, for those that want to uh, operate a business. Let, let's, let's, and I know we're heading in that direction, but as a business-friendly government, if we support and we uh, uh, promote uh, uh, businesses and we want to get people hired, and how we do that is we promote businesses. And if we do that, uh, allow the, the entrepreneur safely to do so uh, with, with that great risk that they're taking, then that's when we generate revenue through the tax collections based on the profit of the business, uh, at the corporate taxes, and based on the employees that they hire that will be paying their employee taxes as well. Those are our two greatest revenues for our budget process that that provide for our fire, police, and, edu and, and education, not fees, not by increasing the fees. And, and what I'm asking for is just simply don't eliminate the fees, but kindly just consider reducing that fee to allow us, especially at this time, to get the people of Guam back to work. So, Madam Speaker, I'm asking consideration of uh, what we initially passed of uh, 13, I, or majority of this room uh, did pass, and I understand the governor's concern, but I think the entrepreneurs of Guam are more than happy to work to get our government back in place, and we're just asking for some assistance, especially during this time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. On the motion, on the motion to place veto bill number 133-35-COR um, into the voting file. Are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none, motion carries. Are there any more motions? If not, we will, sorry, sorry, Senator. Oh. Just, just wanna, um, it's not loaded yet, so I was waiting, but I'll just uh, say, it. and uh, I have two nominations that are pending to be uploaded by COR. One is for the appointment of Dr. Annette David to the Guam Board of Medical Examiners, submitted to COR on December 9th. The other one is for uh, the appointment of Angela Therese Santos to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission, uh, submitted to COR on December 7th. So I expect these will be reviewed and uploaded. Maybe I, I can make a motion it, pending their being uploaded. Okay, so um, I'll go ahead and hear from Committee on Rules Chairs and then I'll get back on your motion because I need to fabricate it. So, um, Senator Lee. Suzu Smasi, yeah. Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. Just a point of information on both of those. They are with the Committee on Rules for review. Um, our friend, uh, Ms. Angela Therese Santos, the committee report for that nomination was over 200 pages. So it's just taking us a little while to make sure that everything is in order, but we should have those up um, hopefully within the next few hours. And I thank my colleagues for their, their patience and their understanding. Sidos Masi. Any comments on uh, Dr. David? Um, so the committee report for Angela Santos was received on the 7th and then Dr. David was received on the 9th at 6 p.m. Um, so we're working on those concurrently um, and I hope to, hope to get them up as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Committee and Rules Chair, Senator Lee. So I will entertain the motion. Senator Teresa, if you just can cut it in half, please. Yes. Thank so on the, I, I would move to place the nomination of Angela Teresa Santos to the Chamorro Land Trust Commission. On, on that agenda. motion, 
to place on the agenda. Are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none. Motion carries. Senator. Thank you, colleagues. Therese. And I would ask that the nomination of Dr. Annette David uh, to the Guam Board of Medical Examiners be placed on the session agenda. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none. Motion carries. Senator Jim Moylan, I understand you still have a motion, and I, I apologize, I should have recognized you again. Senator Jim, you are recognized at this time. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Notwithstanding the House rules, I move to place uh, Bill Number 26935-CORE as amended by Committee on Economic and Development, Agriculture, Maritime, Transportation, Power and Energy, Utilities and Emergency Response, introduced by myself. Uh, which is an act to add Article 9 to Chapter 77, Title 12, Guam Code Annotated, relative to the repair and rehabilitation of Southern High School Auditorium, uh, sponsored by me. Uh, Madam Speaker, move to place this uh, bill on session agenda. Senator Lee, I will recognize you at this time. This is Massey, Madam Speaker. On, on a point of information, this uh, committee report was received by the Committee on Rules on the 11th. Um, it's still... Be with our legal bureau for review. Um, and so perhaps if the body wants to consider this motion uh, by the retiring speaker, um, we could place it at the bottom of the file. And then should this motion be brought up again and the, the mover um, would like the opportunity to discuss it, but it still has not had legal review, I will object at that time but I think it would give an opportunity, hopefully, for that process to take place and for our colleagues to be able to review it prior to the discussion of Bill 269-35-COR as amended. Senator Moylan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I concur with that recommendation. Thank you. On the, so on the motion with the recommendation by CORE to place, are there any objections? Seeing or hearing none. Motion carries. We're just going to take a moment's recess so that we can switch. Transition.
We are back from recess and we are now in the second reading file. Senator Tidakwi, you are recognized. Situ Masi, Madam Chair, I mean, Madam Speaker. Uh, notwithstanding the House rules, I would like to um, ask the body's reconsideration of the action for Bill 377-35 COR, which is uh, an act to amend 30107 of Article 1, Chapter 30, Division 3, Title 5, Guam Code Annotated, relative to timely issuance of the opinion requested of the Office of the Attorney General. On the motion to reconsider, there is an objection. All those in favor? Oh. All those in favor of the motion to reconsider, please raise your hand. Um, Madam. All those Madam. in favor of the motion to reconsider, please raise your hand. Signify by raising your hand. Motion fails. Madam Speaker, he raised his hand. There was an eight. On the motion to place, oh, the legislature is back from recess. On the motion to place in the voting file, the motion passes. Uh, Senator Tidegui, the si next motion. Situs yeah. Masi. Yes. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. The motion to reconsider passes. Senator Tidegui, you are recognized. And thank you to my colleagues for allowing the process of putting, placing um, for reconsideration. Now I'd like to make a motion to place Bill 377-35-COR, an act to amend 30107 of the Article 1, Chapter 30, Division 3, Title 5, Guam Code Annotated, a relative to the timely issuance of the opinion request of the Office of the Attorney General to the third reading file. On the motion to place in the third reading file. To the voting file. To the voting file. file third sorry. reading voting file. Are there any objections? There is an objection. All those in favor to place the bill in the third reading voting file, please signify by raising your hand. Motion passes. 
Speaker Barnes, you are recognized. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when we left off last night, there was a consideration by my colleague, uh, the good Senator from Chonia, to uh, consider uh, a possible amendment or uh, to wait for legal. So uh, I just want to again ask my bo uh, this August body to support the efforts uh, on this authorization for uh, the Guam Football Association, GFA, uh, for uh, the term to increase the lease for up to 20 years because we have grants that are on the table right now and based on FIFA's funding, I mean FIFA's, FIFA's protocol, uh, the requirement of a project needs a, min a minimum period of 20 years. So. I ask my colleagues to support that, those efforts. So thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Speaker Munya Barnes. So there was an amendment to be offered from Senator Terlahi. You are recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. So um, yes, and I support the bill to extend the leases on these uh, particular uh, programs, uh, of course, for the Football Association to build additional facilities for the youth of Guam and the people of Guam. So we've got two facilities we're dealing with. The Harmon one, uh, we are adding uh, 20 more years to a 30-year lease, which will give them a total in the end of 50 years, which is very long. But however, their 30-year lease is almost up. And we have been able to see the improvements made up there and the programs that they've been able to develop and uh, I, understanding that the Department of Parks and Rec is trying to ensure that they are complying with uh, you know, the funds that are supposed to be deposited from events and uh, ensure that they, they get what they are entitled to under these agreements. Uh, my issue is just with the Southern property. So this is uh, in Agate and then, um, so for the Agate lease or license, it was a little bit different because at that time the legislature had approved 25 years for the term plus an option to renew for an additional 25 years. So I was wondering why did we need this bill if they still already had that option to renew for 25 additional years. And um, so the Football Association has told us they need to show a consecutive term of 20 years from today that uh, in order to get the funding that they are asking for from the association. So unfortunately, the, the original term of 25 years is about one year short, I think, of, uh, you know, they've, they, some of those years have gone by, and so they're about one year short on that original term uh, on, to make 20 years. So they need, they need technically one year, but we are going to give them, a, I'm proposing instead of giving them an additional 20 on that original, that we only give them an additional six. So that would, on that original term, because after that, they still have that option to renew for 25 years. So that's what I'm trying to do by my amendment, is just give them what they need. And I've, I've uh, talked to, you know, Mr. Valentino Sangil regarding this, he says, that's all they need. They don't need an additional 20. They need an additional to make up to 20. And so I think the six years is, is adequate so that um, it, it will give them five years to, you know, prepare the plans and get the money and start the construction. And then they will have that 20 year chunk uh, consecutive ahead of them, plus a 25 year option. So my uh, amendment, um, has been uploaded, right? And it, it's um, to amend section 3A of the bill to read. It's on page four, lines one through nine. All right. So the bill says, notwithstanding any other provision of law, Lihas Latour Guahan hereby approves an extension of the I'm adding in the word original term of the memorandum of agreement, MOA. These were recommendations by Legislative Council to correct it to MOA instead of MOU. B 
between the Department of Parks and Rec and the Guam Football Soccer Association on a portion of lot number 477 Agate as provided within public law 30-3-4, and I'm adding the words, an additional six years for a total period of up to 31 years. So that is the remaining 19 years plus six. So a total of 31 years. So a, a that will be the original term on their license, 31 years, with the option to renew for an additional 25 years as provided in section two of the MOA, which amounts to a total of 56 years, subject to the execution by Magahagan Guahan. So, um, so this pretty much changes public law 30-3, where we give them 25 plus an option to renew for 25, to give them now 31 plus an option keep that option to renew for 25 after that. So that would be my amendment, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Senator Trelawhi. Anyone on the amendment? Senator Torres, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in full support of the amendment, and I think that the, the, uh, the proffer of the amendment is, is, is correct in, in why we need to do this amendment. Um, Yesterday, I had inquired from the author of the bill if the terms of the MOU carry forward with the proposed extension, and the answer was yes. The reason I asked if the MOUs and the license agreements stay in place is if you look at the committee report on page 64, the term of the MOU under section 2 uh, talks about a period of, um, the, the period of convening in, um, I'm sorry, the, 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 the term is from uh, February 2014 to March 2039 with the um, option for the parties to renew for an additional 25 years. Now, if you were to look at the terms, if, if you were to, with the proposed bill, add 20 years to, to 2039, that brings you up to 2059. If they exercise the option after that of an additional 25 years, that brings the, the lease terms up to 2084. So what began as a 30-year lease, the net effect of all, or the sum of, of all these amendments and extensions and options will, will equate to a 70-year lease on the property. Now, this morning I received uh, an email from the Guam Football Association encouraging me to support the bill, and of course, we, we want to support the, the extension um, of the term so that there is 20 years remaining on the lease and GFA has its, its uh, FIFA has its uh, requirements that there be 20 years of, of the, the, the lease in place when they give uh, grant monies over. I think that it, it, she also mentioned that there's opportunities for future grants coming in the next few years, and so there's a need to maintain that 20-year lease balance. With the amendment that is proffered this morning of six years, it, it gives the Guam Football Association ample cushion if in, if in fact they're looking at grants over the next several years or few years. If there's an additional amendment needed after six years, then, you know, this body can, can also go back and entertain that. But I believe that, that anybody who, who is comfortable with the notion that a 30-year initial lease can turn into a 70-year lease, um, I, I find it, I find it uh, not something that is, is really feasible at this time to agree to something like that. So I, I hope everybody's following me. The, the point is, if they want cushion so that they can guarantee that they get FIFA funds, give them the cushion, but give them reasonable cushion. Because right now, the lease for the Southern property goes from 2014 to 2039. If you give them 20 years after, uh, on top of that, the lease then goes out to 2059. If they exercise their option to renew, it goes up to 2084. I don't believe that that's what we contemplated as a body when we initially gave the, the license agreement. So this is a, a very good compromise. I think it, it ensures that the monies can be made available 
from FIFA to GFA, ample cushion, and it also then doesn't bind the government of Guam or bind this property by the government of Guam to the GFA for up to 70 years. Um, no one, I, I don't see how anyone can think that's a bad uh, compromise. So, Sidus Maasi for proffering that. Um, that that was my concern yesterday when I asked about the MOA. We we have to protect government properties. We have to ensure within reason that all the terms of the license agreements and MOAs are fully complied with. And so it's it's always prudent to extend in reasonable increments so that the control and purview of the legislature uh, remains and the government remains over its lands and the le license and lease of its lands to, um, to other than government uh, needs. So I, I rise in full support and please, uh, colleagues, please consider this. This is a very reasonable, very sound um, amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Torres. Anyone else wishing to speak on the Trilahi Amendment? Senator St. Augustine, then Senator Lee. M Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I don't know if it's for the author of the amendment or the author of the bill. I understand the amendment is on page four, lines one through nine. I understand that on the amendment, I'm looking at both the amendment, I'm looking at the bill itself. It talks about MOU and then it talks about MOA. Is asking to change the MOU to MOA. Understood. I understand both documents. Quite familiar with those documents. But it says at the very bottom of the amendment to allow legal counsel to make technical correction with respect to the terms of MOU and MOA. Is, is that to safely assume that legal counsel, and either one can answer it, is going to change all over this bill, the MOU to MOA? I need to understand that first. Otherwise, I agree with the intent, but I couldn't support it because if there's other problems that says MOU, and when it was supposed to really mean MOA, it needs to all be corrected. So that's what I would need to hear. Thank you, Senator St. Augustine. Senator Shalahi, do you yield to the question? Yes, and I thank the, um, my colleague for the question. It's a good question because even I was confused. So according to legal, who made that suggestion to me, it is, it, the original law says MOU, however, the the agreement that was actually signed is titled an MOA, Memorandum of Agreement. So that is why she has uh, made a determination in this floor amendment to use MOA, and I'm going to allow her to continue by my amendment to allow her to make a change only in this part of the bill to con continue to consider and put the correct term as best as she can determine. And right now she's determined it's MOA. That was the executed document. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Trelawhi. Senator St. Augustine. Madam Speaker, I understand the response. I'm only concerned then, maybe the author can answer this. Like I said, on page four, when you look at the amendment, one through nine, it ends at nine. But as you go further down on the bill, it says the term of the MOU, I just wanna make sure there's no conflict. Because on many occasions, folks will sit down and say, let's come up with a memorandum of understanding, but technically, we're really going after a memorandum of agreement. And if this can all be fixed, any future use is all based on the agreement that they will all sign anyway. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And may, maybe the author or somebody else can answer that. Otherwise, I just ask that legal will make the corrections everywhere they need to make the MOU to MOA and be done with that. And that, and that should fix it. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Snogacine. Speaker Barnes, do you yield? Uh, yes, and thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I will heed the suggestions of the retiring speaker from GIGO and, and allow for technical corrections as needed by legal counsel as it relates to that. Because uh, in understanding the differences between an MOU and an MOA, it's virtually same. But uh, again, it's, it's incumbent upon what is the, the legal terminology that has been utilized, and both MOU and MOA were utilized. So I guess if we allow uh, legal to work the uh, technology, to work the term 
terminology as it relates to what has been approved and already existing in law today can be worked out. Thank you very much. On the motion to allow legal to make the technical corrections to the bill, any objections? Senator Trelawhi? Oh, anyone? I'm sorry, Senator Lee. Sujus Masi, Madam Speaker, um, I rise just for some clarification if I could ask a question of the proffer of this amendment. Please state your question. Um, so the question is, what would be the, to I know it was alluded to by previous speakers and by the mover of this amendment, but what would be the total possible length of this lease if this amendment is approved? That's one. And then if we could also be clear about which year marker do these potential extensions become an available option to the lessee and to, gover to the government of Guam? Senator Trelawhi, do you yield to the question? Yes, and I, I thank my colleague for that question as well. So, um, if, council tried to be very careful to show that uh, we're adding an additional six years to the original term, which by the original MOA was, at, was ending on 2036. So we're adding an additional six years to that. And then with the option to renew for an additional 25, still intact as provided in the section two of the MOA, which amounts to a total of 56 years. Um, sorry, I didn't add up the dates, but it's, um, it would be 2036 plus six plus 25 if they exercise the option, if. That Senator Lee. To just Masi. And so the second part of my question is on which year marker do, like which year marker does the potential extension become an available option, at which point? Like, Senator Trelawhi. Right, so it'd be 2039 plus six years, so 2045, 2045. Thank you, thank you, Senator Lee. Anyone on the main, on the amendment? Senator Trelawhi, would you like to close? Yes, and I want to thank my colleague from Tamuning for, for explaining it very well as well. That, uh, yeah, the, the, big, the, big, the important part of this amendment is they don't need or want a 70-year total lease. They need 20-year consecutive right now and that option to renew for 25. That would give them a total of 56 years. And they had originally been given a total of 50 years and the original public law 30-3. So I just think it's, it's uh, very prudent of us to not give them 70, you know, if they don't need that right now, they're not, they're able to get their funding without 70, they only need uh, 20 right now, which would give them a com total of 56 if they have exercise options. So I wanna thank my colleagues for their support on this amendment, thank you. Thank you, Senator Trelawhi. There has been no objection to the Trelawhi amendment Motion passes. Senator Trelawhi. Thank you. I just want to add and um, um, that, yeah, I support this bill because the author was careful to include or the committee was careful to add in that, you know, all the terms of the original MOU are going to be, um, that would be held accountable for all those terms. And also uh, I received the commitment of the Department of Parks and Rec that they are going to ensure that these covenants that have been made are enforced. And so that is, that is all we can ask. I mean, that, and, and, but we are relying on the Department of Parks and Rec, so I hope, you know, that they will live up to this responsibility as well. And I want to thank the sponsor for the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Trelawhi. Anyone on the main motion? Bill 402-35. Senator Marsh Taitino, you are recognized. And I just want to state my support for this bill. Um, I do think that uh, it's been made stronger and it's living up to its intent. It's meeting the needs of the Guam Football Association, which was the intent all along. So 
Um, I appreciate everybody's thoughtfulness and support thus far. Um, perhaps most all of us have been able to go down there and tour the facilities and, and see their operations. They have been around since 1975, and the improvements that they've made, the commitment that they've had to our community, the outreach that they do, the allowance uh, and networking with other parts of the community to use the fields free of charge so that it's a benefit not just to the soccer association, but to beach volleyball players and others that use those, fa those facilities. Those were important to me in this consideration. And so um, they, it looks like, have been very good stewards with the, the trust we have given them. And so uh, it makes a lot of sense to me to continue giving them support when they have been such good stewards. And I just wanna note for the record that partnerships like this can be extremely beneficial to the community. We've benefited for many, many years from this partnership, but it also has been important for it to go through the careful scrutiny through the legislature. We've had uh, public hearings on it. We've had oversight hearings, we've had communication with the Department of Parks and Recreation, so that there is uh, transparency and accountability all around. And it has proven to be something extremely beneficial, but all the proper processes are in place so that this will continue to benefit the community as we go on, because uh, as the former speaker mentioned, that uh, there, there is a commitment to continue making sure that uh, it lives up to its agreements and uh, that we have the ability to um, have that oversight over it. So uh, again, I support this bill and um, I look forward to the continuing many years of the Guam Football Association uh, benefiting our community. So do us Masi. Thank you very much, Senator Marsh Taitino. Anyone else wishing to speak on the main motion? Senator. Jim Moylan, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I too support the bill. Uh, I'm very happy also with, with the amendment as, as proposed. Uh, I had the opportunity to talk recently with um, the Guam Football Association and also visit the site too. And the president of the association uh, really expressed uh, the importance of, of this moving forward, especially with the amendment, uh, that it would allow them to complete uh, the additional work needed at the agate property and also the renovations that they'll be, uh, be doing at the Harmon uh, Field as, as well, from the lights to the, the new course, and it's, it's gonna be a beautiful project, which will be a great benefit to our, our community and, and then our, our youth as well. Uh, but I, he also pointed out on the uh, FIFA.com website that if you actually go to the AFC version and you hit the little dot on Guam in the middle of the ocean, it gives a report of how much funds are available from FIFA uh, so, so far that it has been beneficial to help our youth and, and to help the health of our island with all these uh, programs that they have available. To include, uh, so far, they, they even gave $100,000 for, for this equipment for the, for the soccer fields uh, for, the, for the students or for the youth to, to utilize. And, and so far, um, out of 3.5 uh, million, uh, they have 3.5 million remaining in, uh, in projects and they spent, uh, of, of which they spent 17%. Uh, uh, so with this bill, it would really uh, allow them to utilize the maximum amount uh, provided to them. And all this funds, so of course, will go into jobs creation and more importantly, the, the completion of, of these projects uh, to include the one in the South. Uh, total approved funds since 2016 was $5.3 million. And available funds on the website uh, for Guam, just for Guam, total available funds from 2016 to 2022 is over 11,375,000. Uh, so w with the support of this bill, giving them the years that they require, what I was told there, that when this renews, they're looking at 15 million more, because they really want to see, FIFA really wants to see Guam become like the hub uh, of the Pacific side here, and we had the beautiful property and border to do that. And we're looking for great things to come, come through this and, and keeping our island healthy and keeping our youths occupied and creating jobs as well. So I'm in support of this bill and especially the amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Senator Moylan. Anyone else on the main motion? 
Speaker Barnes, you may close. Um, speaker, um, for giving me the opportunity to close in this bill and thank my uh, colleagues uh, uh, for uh, their thoughts and sentiments and their support. Uh, I've always believed, um, Madam Speaker, uh, something my father always believed in as an avid athlete uh, when he was here on this precious earth was build it and they will come. The Guam Football Association has been around for over 45 years, and in that time, they have taken the sport of soccer, we call it internationally, it's called football, to grow from hundreds of kids to thousands and thousands of kids. And even more special was the recognition on Guam's programs that they've initiated here. And something that I could say as a mother, as a grandmother and a great grandmother whose kids um, play on the fields that were built here was uh, not that I'm a soccer player, because I've always been a softball player. I just want to say that they had a mother's league, a league for mothers. And based on that success, and the presentation that was done internationally, that the international arena of FIFA has supported that efforts and encompassed that program into their programs internationally or worldwide. And you know what? That just goes to show that when you build it, they will come. If you bring the people together, success will happen. And more importantly, this is a way, and I know that this is something that our Southern residents have been asking for for years and years and years to say, you always build fields in the North. You always build gymnasiums in the North. You always build for the North and Central. What about the South? And this is one way where we can say the legislature listens and the South will have a home. Um, as it relates to football, soccer, and uh, I'm really happy for that. So with that being said, Madam Speaker, uh, thank my colleagues, and I really hope that I can get a unanimous support uh, for this and ask that this bill be placed on the third reading voting file. On the motion to move the bill to the third reading voting file. Motion passes. We are. <laughs> Speaker Tina Roseman Yabarnes, you are still recognized. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, I move to place Bill Number 368-35 as amended, um, which is introduced by myself and Senator Pito Terlai, which is an act to add a new Article 1A to Chapter 2, Title 30, Guam Administrative Rules and Regulations relative to the cigarette stamps and to require the Department of Revenue and Taxation to issue a request for proposal RFP for the enforcement of tobacco taxes as identified by the Director of Revenue and Taxation on behalf of the Government of Guam onto the third reading file with an opportunity to speak on it, Madam Speaker. On the motion to discuss, uh, Madam Chair. Speaker, Chair. yes, point of order, I guess. Could we, um, I would like to beg the indulgence of the sponsor, if we could um, move into the Committee of the Whole and invite the Department of Revenue and Taxation. The bill is quite complex, and at the original hearing, the bill's been changed significantly, and they did not totally support the original bill. So I would just like to get their concurrence. In Committee of the Whole? I have no objection to that, Madam. There is a motion to resolve into the Committee of the Whole. Senator Titino. Um, if I could have a, a point of information, I guess, or point of consideration, if that's a thing. State your um, point of information. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we know that time is of the essence. So I'm wondering, uh, I'd like to inquire if anybody knows how much time it would take to move into the Committee of the Whole. and as we're setting up, if it's an extensive amount of time, if there's something else we could discuss while it's being set up. Senator, uh, Speaker Barnes. Uh, Madam Speaker, if I may, that this is a very important bill. As you know, during the public hearings, this, uh, and it had a couple of public hearings that there were talked about 
anywhere between 10 and 15 million escaping from our government coffers. And, and I've been really, really patient putting this at the bottom of the agenda and I, before we put all the measures on. And, and I don't have an objection to, to hearing other bills while we wait for the parties to come in, maybe one or two, but I think it's important based on the timeline that we have. Uh, it's 11 o'clock right now and we have a hard uh, close down at 2 p.m. And I think that this bill is, is quite critical uh, for the for the government, as it as it will include bringing a possible 15 million into the coffers. So, Madam um, Speaker, my my reservations on that is that this bill is critical, and I'd like that we try and address it right now, as it's had gone through its term, its time in placement. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker Barnes. There is a motion to resolve into the committee of the whole. Any objections? Huh? She's the one. We are now, the, uh, Senator Chalahi, before we resolve into the Committee of the Whole, can you please state for the record uh, who you'd like to be invited as the panel? The Department of Revenue and Taxation, please. Five minutes. Thank Pardon? you very much. We will inform uh, the panel members. And we are now in the, Speaker Tina Munya Barnes, you're recognized for a point at of the, information. And the recommendation of the body, Madam Speaker, just to be fair to everybody, we move that we take just a one hour lunch break starting now and then come back and start immediately on this effort. And we can get we the are in recess until 12.20 p.m.